Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read in 2020. So I actually didn't start reading until about one month into quarantine, which was in April. So I started reading in April because I was bored in quarantine, didn't really have anything to do. So I decided to, to start reading again because I had been in like a two year reading slump. So I haven't read any, hadn't read any books in like two years. So I decided to start reading again in quarantine since I didn't have anything to do. And I did manage to read 33 books in those eight months, which is kind of impressive because I have never read that many books like ever. So yeah, I was on a roll for a little bit and then I got into a bit of a reading slump. But um, yeah, I read a lot of books. So I'm just going to be quickly going through them and talking about not I'm not going to be going in depth into my reviews on them because there's a lot of books but I was going to be talking about my reading and just like a quick little review about what I thought of the books so yeah let's begin oh also my shelf looks like a mess <laughs> because I have all of my books laid out in front of me so that's why my shelf looks like that <laughs> so the first book that I read in April was What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera and I gave this book four stars I read this book in less than a day and it just got me so excited to start reading again so this was the book that got me out of my reading slump. After that I read Dangerous Girls by Abigail Haas and I also gave this book four stars. This one was a roller coaster of a ride but this was a really good book as well. The next book I read was Only Mostly Devastated by Sophie Gonzalez and this was like a Simon versus the Homo Sapiens agenda meets Clueless and like a kind of like a Grease spinoff which was so good and I also gave this one four stars. And then after that I read Every Heart Adore by Shannon McGuire. I read this one on audiobook so I don't have the physical book with me but I gave this one three stars because it was a good story but I just I suck at reading audiobooks so yeah that one I gave three stars. And then after that I read Verona Comics by Jennifer Dugan and this was this is such a good book. It was kind of like a Romeo and Juliet kind of story and it had a lot of mental health representation which I thought was really good and I gave this one four stars. The last book I read in April was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I read this one on audiobook and it honestly <laughs> changed my life. Like this is my new favorite book of all time. If you want to read this book you have to read it on audiobook because it's just a completely different experience like this is I'm not good with reading audiobooks but this was the best audiobook that I have ever read like I will read this I'll listen to this audiobook for the rest of my life like it was it was so good and I of course gave this one five stars I forgot that I actually read another book in April so I reread Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo and I like put little tabs for like all of like my favorite scenes and I of course gave this one five stars this is another one of my all-time favorite books and I just I had to reread it but I actually never got around to rereading Crooked Kingdom for some reason which that one is my favorite book of the two but yeah this one was the last book I read in April. So May was actually a really good reading month for me. I read a lot of books in May and the first one was The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller and I gave this book four stars and this was this was such a good story. The writing was just excellent. Like I want to read more of her books and yeah this one this one was really good. The next book I read was The Nowhere Girls by Amy Reed and I gave this one five stars. This was such an incredible and powerful story. I highly recommend it. The next book I read was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I also gave this book five stars. This was in incredible book like I can't recommend it enough this was such a good story and then after that I went on my Percy Jackson binge so I read all five of the books in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series and I gave all of them five stars these books were so so good and I can't wait to continue reading the rest of his books I'm gonna read the Heroes of Olympus series hopefully in the new year so yeah these books were so good. Editing me hopping in here real quick to talk about the Percy Jackson movies. The Percy Jackson movies 
are absolutely garbage. <laughs> the first two, there's only two movies because I think they decided to stop after they realized that the movies are flops. So yeah, I watched both of the movies. I have a video of it on my channel, like reacting to the movies. They are absolutely terrible, but I am very, very excited for the TV show that they're doing with, I think it's with Disney Plus, and I saw somewhere that it has a higher budget than Marvel or something like that, so I just know that this TV show is going to be so good, especially because Rick has input in it and he's like involved in the entire process, and it's just going to be, I just, I just know it's going to be so good, and I am so excited for that, but um, yeah, the movie's absolutely garbage. The last books that I read in May were the Heartstopper comics by Alice Oseman. I read all three volumes that are currently out now and I gave each of them five stars. It was such a cute graphic novel and I can't wait for volume four to come out and yeah it was such a cute light-hearted little graphic novel and I really enjoyed those. The first book that I read in June I actually don't have anymore because I sold it on Depop. It was The Cheerleaders by Kara Thomas. I gave that book three stars I didn't really enjoy it like it didn't really stand out to me or anything so that's why I unhauled it and sold it on Depop and then after that I read all of the books in the To All the Boys I Loved Before series by Jenny Han and this was a good series but none of the books really stood out to me I'm looking at my Goodreads ratings right now and I gave the first book four stars I, I really enjoyed this one but I gave the second and third one three stars because they felt kind of pointless to me like I feel like this series could have been a standalone like I'm, I would reread this book but I didn't really care for the second one and the third one. Editing me hopping in here once again just to talk about the movies and um the first movie was so good like chef's kiss one of the best book to movie adaptations ever and the second movie is absolutely garbage. Like, it's it's really bad. I don't know why they decided to switch directors because the first one was so good and the second one was so bad. Men ruin everything, sorry, but it's true because the first one was a female director and it was such a good movie. And then the second one was a male director and it was terrible. So, yeah, do with that what you will, but I hope that the third movie... Is gonna be good if it's the same director as the second one then I do not have high expectations but I will still be I will still be watching it and then after that I read two graphic novels both by Carly Uston the heavy vinyl series the heavy vinyl ride on the radio and then y2ko these graphic novels are are so good I gave both of them five stars and I can't wait for the third volume to come out because this was such a good graphic novel and the art in this I don't want to like show a spoiler but like the art in these graphic novels is just so beautiful so I am obsessed with these graphic novels the last book I read in June was Tosh Hart's Tolstoy by Catherine Ornsby and I gave this one four stars it was a good read but it didn't really stand out to me or anything so I'm probably going to be unhauling this one and selling it on my depot July was the weakest reading month for me. I only read three books and the first one was Bloom by Kev Kevin Panetta and Savannah Ganucho. And this was, a, this was a super cute graphic novel. I gave this four stars. Just another cute, lighthearted graphic novel, which I'm really into. So yeah, this one was really cute. And then after that, I read the Love Creekwood Simonverse novella by Becky Albertalli. This was this was so cute and it was such a cute ending to the whole Simon verse so I really enjoyed this one and I gave it five stars. The last book I read in July was Free Centoya, a memoir by Centoya Brown Long and I didn't give this one any ratings because it feels weird to rate like memoirs and stuff but this was a, a really good memoir and very eye-opening and so just how just how messed up the prison system is in America so this was a really good read. And then I didn't read books for a few months, so now we're skipping to November, and I reread Red, White, and Royal Blue. I read this in April, and then I also reread it in November. I gave it five stars both times. This was, this is such an incredible enemies to lovers romance. It's so cute, and it's just, it's such, it's 
such a cute story. I read it twice and the only thing I don't like about this book is just how long the chapters are but it flew by the second time that I read it because I was just so excited to keep reading since I do know what happens and yeah I really enjoyed this one. The next book that I read in November was I Would Leave Me If I Could, a collection of poetry by Halsey and I also gave this five stars and I did a bunch of tabs on the side. Uh, the pink ones are references to Badlands, the blue are references to Manic, yellow references to Hopeless Found a Kingdom, and then the green ones are just like the poems that resonate with me and this was, this is so, this was so good. <laughs> Halsey is an incredible writer, like songwriter, poet, like she's just, she's so talented and her writing is just so good so I really enjoyed this one. The last book that I read in November was The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton and I gave this three stars. This was a this was a good book. It was an interesting premise and I want to watch the movie. I just haven't gotten around to it but yeah I saw this on my shelf. This was my sister's required re required reading in like high school I think and I've heard a lot of good things about it so I decided to pick it up and it was good but nothing really crazy or that stood out to me so that's why I gave it three stars. And then the last and only book that I read in December was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab and I gave this three stars because I was just very disappointed in it. I had higher expectations. I did a whole spoiler free review on it so if you want to see like my more in-depth thoughts on this book then you can watch that but I this this wasn't really didn't really meet my expectations and I was disappointed in this and it was the only book I read in December and I did enjoy it so not a really good way to wrap up my reading here but um <laughs> yeah this was the last book that I read in 2020. So those are all the books that I read in 2020. I managed to read 33 books in like less than eight months because there was a bit of a gap there where I didn't read for a few months because I think I started going to work again so I just didn't have the time or energy to read books but I hope to read a lot more in 2021. I have a bunch of books that I'm so excited to read. I am actually holding up my phone on a stack of books right now and I'm so excited to read all of these books. And yeah, my goal for the new year is to read 40 books. I think I'll be able to do it because I managed to read 33 books in less than a year. So I think I'll be able to do it. My goal for 2020 was 35. I I almost, almost made it. I feel like I, I could have reached my goal if I wasn't in such a bad like reading slump. Struggling to read Addie LaRue, but... Yeah, this was a very good reading year for me. I got so excited to start reading again and I'm so happy that I did start reading again, especially during quarantine because I didn't have anything to do. So yeah, I'm very excited to start reading again and making booktube videos, I guess. I, guess. I just want to talk to other people about my favorite books and stuff like that. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!